Hey guys, Brendan New Productions here, and welcome to yet another video tutorial. Now, one of the things that I've noticed as I've gone about all of my Java tutorials is that I've done all of my Java tutorials in Eclipse. Now, although I did mention that there are definitely other ways to edit your Java source code, I never really covered all of the other ways, and I actually made a, a bunch of tutorials that never actually got published covering how to make programs using things other than Eclipse or an integrated development environment. However, in this tutorial, I really want to demonstrate that it is possible to use things other than Eclipse. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to, in Windows, write a Java program with Notepad, and then compile it and run it using the command prompt. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a Notepad window open here, and it's just a regular Notepad window. I've gone ahead and set the font to Consolos because that's a fixed width font, so we're not going to have weird spacing issues. And I'm just going to write a quick, simple program. So I'm going to do just as we would do in Eclipse. So I'm going to type public class test. And then we've got some curly braces. And then I'm going to say public static void main string args. Once again, add in some curly braces. And then I'm just going to say system.out.println hello world. And as you can see, this is a basic Java program um, that just type that just prints out hello world. And we don't get any fancy syntax highlighting or anything like that just because we're editing it in Notepad. However, this program will still work. So in order to save this program, all we have to do is go to File and Save in Notepad. And then I'm just going to go ahead and save it in my documents. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that all files is selected as our filter. And I'm just going to save it as test.java. Just like in Eclipse, make sure that you save it with the same name as your class. Otherwise, the Java compiler will yell at you. Great. So now if we were testing an Eclipse, all we would have to do is press the Run button, and the program would run in the little special Eclipse uh, console. However, since we're not going to actually use Eclipse to compile and run the software, we need to go ahead and open up Command Prompt. Now there's two commands we need to know uh, to go ahead and do this operation. There's the Javic command, which stands for Java Compile, and there's the Java command, which you will run, use to run your applications. So if we go ahead and type in the Java command and the Java command, we need to make sure that both work. As you can see in my, my command prompt, Java actually worked. Um, so we can actually go ahead and type in Java, Java dash version. And we can see that we have version 1.8 installed. Um, but you can see Javac doesn't work. And this is because what I have installed in my system is not the Java source development kit, but rather as you can see here, the Java runtime environment. Now, the Java runtime environment comes pre-installed on some machines, and on other machines, you just end up installing it simply because um, programs require the Java runtime environment to run. Anytime you have a Java program, it needs to run with the Java runtime environment. So in order to actually gain access to the command Java C, we need to download the Java Source Development Kit, otherwise known as the Java SDK. Now I've got a hold ahead and already started the Google search for this SDK. All you have to do is type in the Java SDK, and then you can go ahead and navigate to Oracle's webpage. And then as you can see here, there's an option for the JDK, which stands for Java Development Kit. So we can go ahead and press download. And then once we do that, we have several options. I'm running a Windows 64 bit. Now, once this is downloaded, so you're just going to go ahead and download and install it. Nothing special about that. Um, once that's downloaded and installed, like it is on my system, um, you'll notice that once you go into the command prompt and type Java C again, nothing happens. Well, see, the problem with Windows command prompt is it doesn't uh, know where to look for this Java C program. So when you type in Java C, you're telling it to launch an executable called Java C.exe. Now, by default, where it's looking is in the system or in the Windows slash System32 folder. However, Java does not install to the Windows System32 folder because it is not a Windows proprietary thing. So what you need to do is you need to tell Windows Command Prompt to search elsewhere whenever you type in a command. So when you type in Java, what Windows is doing is it's searching in the Windows System32 folder for a Java command, and it's also searching in other places too. Um, so when you type Java C, it's searching in the Windows System 32, and it's searching in some other places. Now, where else is it searching to see if it can find an executable file with the name of Java C? Well, 
You can go ahead and find out by accessing your system properties. In Windows 8, you can get to this by right-clicking on your, the Start menu here and pressing System. In other versions of Windows, you can go ahead and go to the Computer or My Computer and right-click and press Properties. And then once you're in here, um, you can go ahead and go to the Advanced System Settings. This is pretty much the same on all versions of Windows. And then we're going to click on the Environment Variables button. And we're going to scroll down in the System Variables section until we find the path here. Now if we press Edit, you can see that this is actually a list of various file paths separated by semicolons. And these are the other paths in which the command prompt is actually searching for files to run. And as you can see here, there's our system 32 that we're searching for. So what we need to do is we need to tell Windows command prompt to actually search for the Java C executable. So in order to do that, um, we actually need to locate the Java C executable ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a new instance of Fire Ex File Explorer. And then I'm going to go ahead and navigate to where the um, where I where I installed the Java SDK 2. So I installed that to my local disk, program files, Java. And then we have the option of what what we actually want to choose. Now there's a difference as I mentioned in the beginning of the video between JDK and JRE. JRE stands for the Java runtime environment and JDK stands for the Java development kit. Java C is going to be found in the Java development kit. So we're going to go ahead and navigate into there. And then we want to look at the binaries, which is where the .exe files are stored. So the bin folder. And then as you can see in here, here is our Java C.exe. So this is the file that we need to actually compile our source code. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on the address bar here and copy this path. And then we can go ahead and paste this path to the end of this list of directories that Windows should be searching through. So we can go ahead and add a semicolon and then paste in our directory for Java. And we're going to go ahead and press OK, press OK here, X out of system, or press OK on system properties, and then we should be all set. So let's go ahead and try to launch the Java C command now. And as you can see, it's still not recognized as an internal or external command. But this is because the command prompt is still running on an old version of that environmental variables list. So we actually need to launch a new version or a new instance of command prompt. And you can do this by right clicking on the start menu and pressing command prompt. You can also do it by opening up run and typing in cmd.exe. You probably know how to get to command prompt. And now if we go ahead and type in Java C, you can see that it works. Um, you, we actually have all of the options for Java C and we can type in Java C dash version to get the version of our Java C program. Great, so now that we have Java C running and we want to verify that Java is also running, so Java version. So Java is also running, so everything is doing great. We can go ahead and compile the source code that we've previously established. Now, if you're coding in Eclipse and you press the little debug button, it automatically compiles your code and it automatically uh, runs it for you. In fact, Eclipse actually compiles your code while you're coding. That's how it's able to give you um, some errors. It's able to bring up these errors that you're talking about or that you, you have in your source code, and it's able to tell you about them. So let's go ahead and use Java C manually. So if you're not familiar with command prompt, no worries. All you need to do is go into the directory where your program is located. So ours is located in my documents folder. So we can use the CD command to change directory. And then we're just going to type in documents and press tab to autocomplete. Now, while we're here, we can type in dir to learn what um, files are actually in, in the directory, and we can find our test.java. However, I'm not sure what's in my documents folder, um, so I'm not going to type the dir command. All right, so what we can do now is we can go ahead and compile our source code, and we can do that by typing in java c, java compile, and then the name of the source code file that we want to compile. So as you can see right above the command prompt window here, ours is called test.java. And then we can go ahead and press enter. And in the command prompt land, anything that does not return any text has completed successfully. So we can assume that our, comp the, our compile of test.java has completed successfully. So now if we actually um, search for other files within, the, within this directory, so we can actually type in dir test. Um, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. That is not what I wanted to do at all. So I don't think we can actually use the dir command with uh, with looking for specific files. That's okay. So what this Java C command actually did is it created a new file in our documents directory called test.class. 
Now this dot class file is what we need for the Java runtime environment to run our program. So how do we make the Java runtime environment run our program? We simply use the Java command, not Java C, just Java. And then we type in the name of our program. So as you can see here, we have test.java and we have public class test. So what we're gonna type is Java test. We don't wanna put any file extension or anything at the end of the um, command here. We just wanna say the name of our class. So Java test, and then when we press enter, it outputs hello world. And if you refer to our source code that I edited it, that I edited once in a blue moon, um, you can see that this is exactly what our code is meant to do. So we can go ahead and actually edit the code to do a little more, just to show that this is this is working. We can say system line. This video is made by slash n Brandonio Productions. So now we have another print statement, and I'm just going to save this file using Control S. So the file has been saved. And then we can go ahead into our command prompt and we can recompile the file. Every time you make a change to the file, you must recompile it. So we're gonna type java c test.java. And then we can type java test. And as you can see, the new code that we just inserted into the file is now in uh, is now output into the command prompt. So if you don't want to use Eclipse, say you hate Eclipse for some reason, and as time has gone on, I've kind of gravitated away from Eclipse and moved toward editing in Vim, as you may have seen by my new tutorials, um, you can definitely just use Command Prompt to compile all of your files. And it's actually a pretty good habit to get into, because as you start coding in other languages, you're going to need the Command Prompt uh, to compile those as well. Now, if you want to be crazy and make the switch to Linux instead of Windows to do your developing, um, you're going to get used to using the terminal, which is exactly the same thing. So this kind of tutorial would apply there as well. Now, one thing I want to go over before I finish up this tutorial, and that's just simply how errors are displayed in the command prompt. So um, if you've used Eclipse or any integrated development environment, you're probably used to er errors popping up as you make them and little squiggly red underlines going under where the errors are, very handy. However, in Notepad, it doesn't know if you've made any errors, so there's no way to tell. And that's where the compiler comes in handy. So if we actually, once again, I'm going to clear the screen, once again try to compile test.java, if you noticed I deleted the semicolon and saved the file, you can see that it actually says that there's an error because a semicolon is expected, and then it draws this little arrow pointing up to where the semicolon is. So the compiler is actually what gives you these error messages that you're going to need to fix. So we can go ahead and add that semicolon back in and then recompile the file and then everything works as it should. So just because you don't have um, little things popping up into the, in the editor itself doesn't mean that you're not going to get alerted of errors. Now, I honestly think that this is a good habit to get into because you're not relying on the integrated in development environment anymore, but you're actually relying on your own skills to make sure that the syntax and semantics that you've typed are correct. Anyway, this has been a tutorial on how to use Java and the Java compiler in the command prompt. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment. I will respond, or somebody else will. We definitely have an active community here. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.